California's increasingly severe wildfires have created thousands of new climate refugees as people whose homes have burned the struggle to find new accommodation. Climate-related displacement is one of the many global issues that leaders and delegates at the COP27 climate conference in Sharm el-Sheikh, Egypt, are grappling with. Iris Spitzer has more from California. California's wildfires have left tens of thousands of homes looking like this in recent years. The campfire, which roared through the town of Paradise in 2018, was one of the state's deadliest and most destructive. It claimed dozens of lives and forced nearly 50,000 people to flee, including Nicholas Joya. I got a call from my significant other, and she said, pack everything up. Like, this is, this is not a drill. Like, time, time to go. Now, four years later, like many others whose homes were destroyed in that fire, he still finds himself in the neighboring town of Chico trying to get back on his feet. It's hard in California, man. Like, I really don't think that there's a place that is safe from it. You know, I think everybody is really, we've been educated on it in the past few years that, you know, this climate change is a real thing and it's affecting, you know, the way fires happen. And it's like the devastation for them from these fires is just, it's, it's insane. Since the campfire, California's wildfires have become even bigger, fueled by drought conditions, which have helped extend the annual fire season. The two most destructive seasons on record in California have come in the past three years. Nicholas is one of a growing number of climate refugees in California and around the world. According to the United Nations, an average of around 21 and a half million people have been displaced every year since 2008 as a result of weather related events. That figure is expected to grow as climate change creates more severe and more unpredictable weather in the coming years. The influx of people who lost their homes in the campfire, as well as other blazes, has inflamed tensions in Chico. Like many American cities, it's dealing with homelessness and record high housing costs. Immediately after the fire, Chico and the surrounding areas really opened their arms, really tried to help folks. But here we are almost four years out. Uh, I don't think people fully understand the loss of housing that occurred. And, you know, 15,000 units were destroyed in 24 hours. California is already one of the world's largest economies. Yet climate refugees are putting a strain on its infrastructure and government services. Across the developing world, resources are even more stretched. There are calls for action at COP27 to help address some of these issues. Within the Paris Agreement, for example, there's a, um, a basis for liability and or compensation under losses and damages, right? And so, so what this would require was really establishing that as the basis uh, for compensation between uh, wealthier countries and less wealthy countries. But setting up those types of mechanisms takes political will and time. In the meantime, many of California's climate refugees are just worried about having a roof over their heads. Ira Spitzer, CNA, Chico, California.